Thank you to Guru for giving me the confidence to come in here with a cut sleeve shirt and take the sleeves up. If Guru can do it, so can we. Got a little bit of a farmer's tan. Huh? Might still have that from the golf trip that we took to Coyote Creek the last <laughs> time we were out there. But I stand with Guru. So for all of you criticizing him, screw you, man. It's all about Guru. I love Daryl Guru Johnson. This is for you, Goo. I love him, too. <laughs> My man. He's a content creator. Uh, so we were talking about the Brandons in the last segment, what the future is for Crawford and for Belt. But I wanted to get your thoughts on this. And I want to, you know, I want to set up this conversation uh, playing something from Farhan Zaidi, which I'm sure the listeners have heard. But if you haven't heard it, Farhan was on with Tim Kawakami on the TK podcast, and he's the president of Baseball Ops for the Giants, as you know. And he had this to say about their farm system and the ETA on when these guys can get called up. Our best prospects are still, you know, other than maybe Kyle Harrison and, and Ramos, who's already in AAA. Uh, you know, we have a group of guys in, in Eugene who may see double uh, A to end the season, but uh, it, it may not be realistic to count on them to be big factors in 2023. So we may not have that infusion of talent next year. It may be another year away. And so that's going to have to factor into our offseason plan as well. So you hear him say those words, well, they might get called up to double A at the end of the season. We don't know. Uh, Kyle Harrison is the number one pitching prospect in baseball by the looks of it. He's mm -hmm. definitely the number one left-handed pitching prospect in baseball. Marco Luciano is right up there. Uh, but the other guys that you're looking for, Luis Matos, who's actually starting to really come around. Luis Matos is looking good. Luciano's come back from injury. Uh, but the White Sox, Shasky, mm -hmm. they are doing something interesting here. They're doing what's called Project Birmingham. Birmingham. I was going to say Birmingham because my family's from Birmingham in England, so that's how I was going to pronounce it, but I got to remember it's Birmingham. So this is Project Birmingham for the Birmingham Barons. Shout out to Michael Jordan. The White Sox are sending all of their prospects, their best prospects, to finish the season in double A. So if in they're in a league that's lower than double A, if they're in high A or low A or even rookie ball, they are going to be sending those prospects to the double A team to finish off their season to see if they actually have what it takes to move up another level like i think this is something that the giants absolutely need to be doing uh this season because the prospects and the way that they've been called up the way that they've been developed within their system it's moving a lot slower than i think we realize shasky i love what the white Sox are doing here so okay now this becomes now more of a business question and this goes right into my wheelhouse i have been anti-minor leagues forever now, everybody opines and, and has these, oh, the minor leagues. Like, we, we, we look, look at it so lovingly, and it's ridiculous. Right now, there's DSL Giants Orange Rookie Ball, DSL Giants Black Rookie Ball, ACL Giants Orange Rookie Ball, ACL Giants Black Rookie Ball. Then there's the San Jose Giants. Then there's the Eugene Emeralds. That's Advanced A. Then you have the Richmond Flying Squirrels. That's Double A. And then you have the Sacramento River Cats. That's AAA. Now, the Giants have been searching mm -hmm. for one competent bullpen arm for months. And I'm going to just go, I'm just looking at the yeah. pitchers, just the pitchers right now mm -hmm. in AAA, where you would think if you're just using your brain, like, oh, well, players come from AAA before they go into the majors. Hmm. 28, 38, 31, 29, 29, 29, 27, 31, 27. These are the ages of their AAA pitchers. There's no talent there. We're wasting our resources. And in an era right now where COVID has basically destroyed the supply chain, inflation's at an all-time high, what is every industry doing? They're getting smarter and more efficient with how they go to business. Mm. You cannot tell me this is the best business model for baseball in general. You cannot tell me that this is fast-tracking their prospects when I'm looking at the big league club and I'm saying, where are the prospects? You cannot tell me that this is money well spent. It feels like AAA is where just fringe players go, just so they can keep their baseball hopes alive. So then why have AAA? That's exactly what I'm asking also. Because <laughs> I, I had a few people text because I you know how I do on the pregame yeah. show from five to six, yeah. Monday through Friday. Uh I talk about the minor leagues a lot and the high A and the double A. Like yeah. I try and bring it bring it in as much as possible because those are gonna be the next guys that are called up. But I had someone text in who said if you really take a look at it, 
Double A has a lot more talent yeah, than Triple A. Triple A is just for a bunch of guys who are, you know, maybe in their mid twenties, just trying to make so, it to the league. So let's let's be practical here. Where are the best facilities? Mm. I'm asking you. Where are the best? Where are the best facilities? Yeah, are they at the minor league level or the big league level? Yeah, the big league level. Okay. Why did we spend all this money on a spring training facility mm. if we're barely going to use it throughout the year? Right. What? Why do we have prospects on the East Coast? Where's the team centered? Mm. Here. Right. So if I wanted to get a player and all my best players are in the double A level, well, how does that logistically make any sense whatsoever? Doesn't. No. I would want them on the West Coast. So Eugene as a location for a minor league, I guess it makes sense, whatever. I would have everybody in San Jose or Sacramento. How much right. logistically are you saving when it comes to money and resources? Then no secondarily, why would I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of minor league baseball? Think of the amount of resources I'm spreading thin when it comes to coaches, machinery, equipment. I want to make it as simplified as possible. I want all my best players learning from a small amount of coaches my philosophy. And if I'm going to be spending all of this money in a COVID era where we're trying to you know, make our resources the most maximized and simplify all of our business expenses, this is not the business model that works. I mean, this is this is why, in part, they went on a, a union strike, and, and why the the players and the owners are really far apart. Everybody sees this from the top level, guys. We have about half too many minor league levels at minimum, and we probably only need one or two layers of minor leagues. I mean, that's that's the reality.